in this uh, section we'll talk about the second step of the central dogma now we talked of dna to mrna formation that is transcription and now we are talking about this step that is from the mrna which has brought the codes from dna how the protein is going to be synthesized and this process as we already know is known as translation so this is what we are discussing in this particular segment now when we talk of this type of expression that means when dna is the genetic material and the information of this dna is translated in the form of protein then it is known as central dogma and this central dogma was proposed by francis crick before we actually take up the entire process of translation we need to understand one very important thing that is the genetic code up till now we have just used the word code the information on dna is translate transcribed rather on mrna so what is that information in form of and those codes are triplet codes which we call the genetic code we already know about this so it is easier for us to understand but when these codes were designed scientists they performed various experiments the scientist who proposed this genetic code the tabular form of those 64 codes was george gamo he was the one who actually came up with this idea and the points which he used to come up with this tabular uh, genetic code was that there are three four nitrogen bases this is one information which he had and the second one was that whatever codes are there they are going to be responsible for only 20 amino acids so how come these four nitrogen bases are responsible for formation of only 20 amino acids so he proposed there should be some kind of uh, permutation combinations which would code for these 20 amino acids his idea was supported by the experiments performed by three other scientists so this was supported by experiments of three scientists who did various experiments first was dr hargobin khurana second was marshall nirenberg and third was sever severo oka these three scientists performed various experiments where they helped in or these experiments by this they resulted in formation of rna and dna molecules which helped or supported the concept of the genetic code which was given by george gamo now how exactly these codes are obtained we can make the whole table but we need to know how exactly this uh, permutation combination is made by which we are getting 64 codes so we will just draw little part of the table this table is given in all the books and notes but we should know how this uh, 64 codes were reached or how were they obtained so let us first make that table and we, let us understand and then we'll talk about certain salient features of the genetic codes let us talk about that table now the codes are triplets that means there are three nitrogen bases or three alphabets which make a code a triplet code that means there are three nucleotides which are going to make this code so if this table is made we have to have these combinations and we are writing these nitrogen bases the first nitrogen base or first letter 
the first letter is written here. Say it is U A C G and we are talking of RNA that is why there is U. The second letter is going to come on this side. Again, let us follow the same sequence. It is going to be U, A, C and one more that is G here. And the third one will be taken on this side. And we will follow the same sequence. U, A, C and G. That means if we make these combinations of these three, then we will get all 64 codes. Let us fill one box and automatically we'll understand how the other boxes will get filled. We have to have combinations. So first alphabet is this U, the second is this U, and the third one is this U. So it is U, U, and U. The second combination that we will get is this U as first, this U as second, and from here we are going to get A. This is the second code. The third will be U again, second U, and third is C, so it is going to be C. The fourth one combination is again U first, second is also U here, and third is G. So these are the four codes which we have obtained. Let us fill one more box just to be sure of how this combination is done. We are starting with A now. That means our first alphabet remains U, second alphabet becomes A, and third are going to be from here. So first is U, second is A, and third is U again. Let us come to the next one. First is U, second is A, and third is A. First is U, second is A, and third is C. And the fourth one is going to be U, A as the second one, and from here G. So we will get, we got four here, four here. Similarly, we will get four more. If we calculate or count all these, we would get 64 codes. Out of these 64, 61 actually code for amino acids and 3 do not code for anything. So these 3 are called nonsense codons. We will use some other words also for these when we actually come to the salient features. So when we say there are 64 codons, how, do it, how did we get this? And this explanation, this combination was given to us by Gamma. So this table, and we can easily understand how these combinations of triplets are obtained using the same nitrogen bases in triplet combinations. So 64, because every block is going to give us 4, 4 and 4. So we will get 64 codes out of which only 61 code for amino acids and 3 do not code for any amino acid and that is why they are known as nonsense codon because they do not make any sense in terms of amino acids. Now let us write down and understand the salient features of this genetic code. So let us now talk about the salient features. Salient features means there are the important points which we are talking about the genetic code. First point, there are 64 codes and we just now saw how we got those 64 codes. Out of these 64, third, sorry, 61, they code for amino acids and 3 are nonsense codons. Second point, each code, each code is non-ambiguous, is non Ambiguous. That means there is no vagueness or ambiguity. What does this mean? If we write a code as AUG, wherever there is a code AUG, it can never be confusing whether it codes for methionine or is it coding for valine. It will always code for methionine. 
So there is no confusion and that is what we mean by non-ambiguity. So it is absolutely specific or clear that this code is going to code for methionine wherever it is found. Third, the codes are universal. The codes are universal. That means whether you read that code in a bacterium or in a human cell, uh, let us take an example. Say U, 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 a code, it codes for phenylalanine. Phenylalanine, whether it is a bacterium or in human cell. So it is universal from the most primitive, simplest organisms to most evolved organisms. This code is going to code for only one amino acid that is phenylalanine. Next, the codes are read without any comma or space. So they are called comma-less. The codes are comma-less. Let us write down an example. Say we write A, U, G, U, 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 A, U, C. We are reading them as triplets. So this is one code, this is one code and the other code. We will never write it as A, U, G, then space, U, U, U. This space or comma does not exist. There is no space, no punctuation, nothing between the codes. So it is read in continuation. The codes are non-overlapping. Codes are non-overlapping. What does this mean? We said we read it as triplet. So our first code say in this case the first code or let me write it separately to understand this say we write a u g u u u and we said the code will be read in triplet so this becomes our first code if it was overlapping then a u g was the first u g u would have been the second g u u would have been the third but in that case u is overlapping in the second code and G becomes overlapping part in the third code. This is not seen in case of codes. That means if we write A, U, G, U, 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 this is one code, no overlapping. That means the three nucleotides of this one code do not become a part of the other code. And next code is going to start after that, which is three, next three, next three, and so on. So that is what we mean by non-overlapping codes. Next point, the sixth point, the start codon, A, U, G, performs dual functions. Dual functions means it is responsible for two things. A, U, G, it codes for methionine, that is one amino acid. And AUG also acts as a start codon. And whenever it is a start codon, the first amino acid which is going to be synthesized, it always going to be methionine. But it is doing two things. If it is in the beginning of any transcription unit, then it will act as start codon. And if this is present in between somewhere, it will just help in synthesis of methionine. Now, the next point is about the stop codons. Let us write down this here, the seventh point. There are three stop codons. These stop codons are the ones which we were talking about as nonsense codons. So they are also known as nonsense codons. There are three nonsense codons and let us write down their technical names also. The first no nonsense codon is UGA which is technically known as OPAL, OPAL. The second nonsense codon is UAA and it is technically known as OCHRE that is OCHR. And the third nonsense codon is UAG, which is technically known as AMBER. So these three, 
wherever they are found they are the nonsense codon that means they do not code for any amino acid so when we talk of the salient features we need to know that there are 64 codons in all 61 code for amino acids three these three are the nonsense codons that means they do not code for anything each code is non-ambiguous there is no ambiguity no confusion about it the codes are universal whether it is a bacterium or animal cell it will always code for the same amino acid they are commaless no punctuation no space between them so it is three 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 in continuation they are non-overlapping that means the nucleotide which is a part of one code or codon does not become the part of other code. AUG acts as the start codon or methionine. Sometimes valine also acts as a start codon. There are three nonsense codons and the nonsense codons they are given technical terms like UGA is called Opel, UAA is called Ocker and UAG is known as amber. So these are the salient features. One more important thing that we have to remember here is that we write one more term whenever we talk of these salient features and we say that the code is degenerate. The code is degenerate. This means one amino acid, one amino acid can be coded by more than one code. And if you read that uh, table of genetic code carefully, those 64 codes, you can find that there are certain amino acids, one type of amino acid, which can be coded by more than one codons. So these are the important features about the genetic code which we need when we come to the actual process of translation. So from the next video, we'll start with the actual process of translation.